Good morning and welcome to you all. Welcome to the service of morning prayer on Tuesday the 25th of May. Today the church remembers the Venerable Bede. Bede was born in Northumbria around the year 670. When he was seven years old, his family gave him to the monastery of St Peter and St Paul at Wearmouth. He then moved to Jarrow, where he lived as a monk for the rest of his life. Although it seems he never travelled further than York, his monastery, first under ben, uh, Abbot Bennett Biscop and then Abbot Culfrith, was a centre of learning and Bede studied extensively. He used all the resources available to write the most complete history of Christian England up to the year 729, as well as commentaries on books of the Bible. He was renowned for his monastic fidelity and his love of teaching, and was fondly remembered by his pupils, including his biographer. He died peacefully in the year 735. So today we remember the Venerable Bede and his contribution to learning, teaching and also to the history of England in his era. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Song of God's righteousness. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with faithful love and compassion. Who satisfies you with good things, so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses and his works to the children of Israel. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom has dominion over all. Bless the Lord, you angels of his, you mighty ones who do his bidding and hearken to the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his will. Bless the Lord, all you works of his, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us, so let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, send me the light of your presence, O God. Set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 132. Arise, O Lord, into your resting place. Lord, remember for David all the hardships he endured, how he swore an oath to the Lord, and vowed a vow to the mighty one of Jacob. I will not come within the shelter of my house, nor climb up into my bed. I will not allow my eyes to sleep, nor let my eyelids slumber, until I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling for the mighty one of Jacob. Now we heard of the ark in Ephrathah, and found it in the fields of Jaar. Let us enter his dwelling place, and fall low before his footstool. Arise, O Lord, into your resting place, you and the ark of your strength. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness, and your faithful ones sing with joy. For your servant David's sake, turn not away the face of your anointed. The Lord has sworn an oath to David, a promise from which he will not shrink. Of the fruit of your body shall I set upon your throne. If your children kept my covenant, and my testimonies that I shall teach them, their children also shall sit upon your throne for ever. For the Lord has chosen Zion for himself. He has desired her for his habitation. This shall be my resting place for ever. Here will I dwell, for I have longed for her. I will abundantly bless her provision. Her poor will I satisfy with bread. I will clothe her priests with salvation. And the faithful ones shall rejoice and sing. There will I make a horn to spring up for David. I will keep a lantern burning for my anointed. As for his enemies, I will clothe them with shame, but on him shall his crown be bright. Arise, O Lord, into your resting place. Jesus, son of David, make us a priestly people. 
Clothe us in righteousness, make us fruitful, and give us hearts to shout for joy in your salvation. We pray in the power of the Spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Job, today reading chapter 2. One day the heavenly beings came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them to present himself before the Lord. The Lord said to Satan, Where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, From going to and fro on the earth, and from walking up and down on it. The Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from all evil. He still persists in his integrity, although you incited me against him to destroy him for no reason. Then Satan answered the Lord, skin for skin, all that people have they will give to save their lives. But stretch out your hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse you to, his, to your face. The Lord said to Satan, very well, he is in your power, only spare his life. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and inflicted loathsome sores on Job from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. Job took a pot's head with which to scrape himself and sat among the ashes. Then his wife said to him, Do you still persist in your integrity? Curse God and die. But he said to her, You speak as any foolish woman would speak. Shall we receive the good at the hand of God and not receive the bad? In all this Jacob did not... Even Job did not sin with his lips. Now when Job's three friends heard of all these troubles that had come upon him, each of them set out from his home. Eliphaz the Temanite, Bildad the Shuhite, and Zophar the Namathite. They met together to go and console and comfort him. When they saw him from a distance, they did not recognise him. And they raised their voices and wept aloud. They tore their robes and threw dust in the air upon their heads. They sat with him on the ground for seven days and seven nights, and no one spoke a word to him, for they saw that his suffering was very great. Here ends our first reading. Song of Peace Spirit of God, teach us your ways, that we may walk in the paths of peace. Come, let us go up to the mountain of God, to the house of the God of Jacob, that God may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For the law shall go out from Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. God shall judge between the nations, and shall mediate for the many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O people of Jacob, come. Let us walk in the light of the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Spirit of God, teach us your ways, that we may walk in the paths of peace. Our second reading is from the letter to the Romans, chapter 1, verses 18 to the end. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven, against all ungodliness and wickedness of those who by their wickedness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has shown it to them. Ever since the creation of the world, his eternal power and divine nature, invisible though they are, have been understood and seen through the things he has made. So they are without excuse, for though they know God, they do not honour him as God or give thanks to him. But they became futile in their thinking, and their senseless minds were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools, and they exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling a mortal human being, or birds, or four-footed animals, or reptiles. Therefore God gave them up in the lusts of their hearts to impurity, to the degrading of their bodies among themselves, because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed for ever. Amen. For this reason God gave them up to degrading passions. Their women exchanged unnatural intercourse for exchanged natural intercourse for unnatural, 
And in the same way, also the men, giving up natural intercourse with women, were consumed with passion for one another. Men committed shameless acts with men and received in their own persons the due penalty for their error. And since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a debased mind and to things that should not be done. They were filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, covetousness, malice, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, craftiness. They are gossips, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil, rebellious towards parents, foolish, faithless, heartless, ruthless. They know God's decree that those who practice such things deserve to die, yet they not only do them, but even applaud others who practice them. Here ends our second reading. The Benedictus. They who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. They who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, they shall mount up with wings as an eagle. So let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us safely to the beginning of this day, having the opportunity to listen to the words of Scripture and make our prayers together. As we remember and give thanks today for the Venerable Bede, so we give thanks for the work that he did during his lifetime, for the history and the commentaries he wrote, for the teaching that he gave, and the inspiration that he was to the faith to so many others. We pray for those places that remember him today, for those dedicated to his name, and for the people of the North East. Lord, we pray for all those who teach today, for those who teach in the faith, those who teach in schools, those who teach those who want to learn. We thank you, Lord, that they are an inspiration in this generation as well, and for all that they do to inspire people to achieve all that you want them to, Lord, that they fulfil the potential that you have given to each one of us. And in this Pentecost season, we pray that the Holy Spirit would guide us to follow in that way, that we would be able to seek out and search what you want to do, we would be open in heart and mind to hear your call upon our lives. As we pray for our world today, Lord, we know that this world that you have so beautifully created has been destroyed through greed, through destruction, through the longing for power, jealousy, and so many of those things that we heard in our reading from Romans. We pray, Lord, that you would protect your people against behaving in those ways. That we would watch the words we speak and the actions that we take. And we would think about whether that would hurt somebody else or hurt you, Lord. We pray for those areas of our world where these things have got out of hand and there is warfare and conflict found today. We pray for an end to those things which divide your children, Lord, here on earth those things that people use as an excuse to hate others, that, gives, that they think gives them the right to judge somebody else. We pray for that spirit of peace, Lord, to be poured out, 
continuing to pray for the people of Myanmar and also giving thanks for the peace between Israel and Gaza that that would hold. We pray for a freedom of speech, that people would be able to say what they feel, that good opposition would be allowed. We pray for an end to dictatorships and for the harsh ruling of so many lands. And so we pray for the leaders of nations, that they would act with wisdom, with charity and with peace to their people, especially at this time when the world faces this global pandemic still. Lord, we continue to pray for India and Nepal and all those places that feel that they are overwhelmed at this time due to the number of cases that they find in their areas and their lands. We pray for those who are working to care for them and for those who continue to work in the areas of medicine and scientific research to try to find more vaccines, tests and cures. For our prayer intention today, we pray for Blackburn Cathedral. We pray for Peter the Dean, for Rowena and Gary, our canons, for the chapter, and for its ministry to the diocese as the Mother Church. We pray also for the ongoing work of the vaccination centre which is housed there. Lord, as we look to the cathedral, we pray that it would be a place, a central place, open for all, for people to go, to be quiet, to be still to find that peace that can only be found in you. And so as we pray for today, we pray for all that we will do, for the work we will do, for the conversations we'll have, for the people we may meet with online or in person, for the times of prayer that we would have, knowing your closeness with us. We pray for all our key workers, for all who will be going out to work today, for those who have recently returned to work, and for those who will be working from home. We pray for those who are unemployed at this time, for those who feel very anxious and fearful because of that, those who long to be able to be back in work. We pray that jobs would be found. We pray for those who try to alleviate the suffering of those anxieties by being a listening ear, a good neighbour. We pray also for the word work of our food banks and food larders and also for those places that work with people in debt and help to manage money. As we have thought about the Venerable Bede today, so we do pray for our local schools. We pray for those that are local to us. Here we pray for St Peter's, Holy Trinity and Sudal Road Primary School. We pray for Dhaka, St Wilfred's and Canon Slade, where many of our young people attend, and for all the local nurseries that our little ones go to. Lord, we pray that they would be kept safe in those places today, and that they would have good learning. We continue to pray also for those who work within the medical profession, for those who've heard that call on their life to work in various different roles and responsibilities, caring for us from the cradle to the grave. We give thanks for those who surround and support the beginning of life, for midwives and those who work in our local birthing centres. We pray for those who work in the intensive care wards in our hospitals for those who will be conducting operations today, for those who will be administering tasks and those who diagnose them. We pray for those who work on the wards and for those who work behind the scenes, porters, cleaners, ward clerks, people who provide food and the many other unseen jobs that mean the hospitals run smoothly. We continue to pray also for our hospital chaplains, for the work that they do in providing such good care and support to staff and to patients. We pray for our hospices and hospice at home. We pray for our care homes and sheltered accommodation, nursing and residential homes, and especially for those who will be visiting loved ones today. We pray for carers, health visitors, district nurses, 
and all those who go out and work in the community and provide that much needed support for people in their own homes. We continue to pray also for our GP surgeries, pharmacies and health centres and for the work and advice that they will be doing today. And we give thanks for all those places to the vaccination centres, for those who will be administering vaccines and those who will receive them today. We pray for the local mobile vaccination centres who will be going out and about this coming week. And so we bring to you, Lord, those we know who are in need of your healing touch, for those who suffer in body, mind or spirit, those who long for that healing and wholeness. We pray for David, Alan, Jeff, John, Jim, Elaine, Kath and her family, Christine, Sister Catherine, Douglas, Steve, Joanna, Jean, Jane, Eric, Baby Thomas, Andrew, Judy, Helen, Scylla, Linda, Oscar, Jack, Baby Erin, Cheryl, Joyce, David and Audrey. Lord, we pray for them and all those we name in the silence of our hearts today. And so we pray for those who have died. We pray for those who have died this past night, those who have died recently and those whose anniversaries occur at this time. Lord, you give us such hope in the gift of the resurrection, one through the death of Jesus, your Son. Help us to see that and to know the joy of eternal life, where one day we will be reunited with our loved ones again. God, our Maker, whose Son Jesus Christ gave to your servant Mead grace to drink in with joy the word that leads to know you and to love you. In your goodness, grant that we also may come at length to you, the source of all wisdom, and stand before your face. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me for this service of morning prayer today. We have a service of evening prayer this evening at five o'clock as usual if you're able to join me for that service. In the meantime, I do hope that you have a good day, that you stay safe, take care, look after yourselves and you remain as always in my prayers. Do take care.